Good day and welcome to another week of A Week at the Plot. It's Monday morning about eight o'clock. The planes from Heathrow don't seem to be coming this way at the moment. They are landing um, this side of Heathrow so they're coming across London and landing this side so they're most probably taking off the other way today. Look at those beans, how they're yellowing on the left there. Those are our Madeira maroon. That's a sort of September view, not an August view. However, however, first thing I noticed when I got down here was frogs jumping in the pond. That's the pond over by the beans. Second thing I noticed was that I assume it's a fox has been digging in this raised bed which has got our potatoes in and the digging has heaved up a number of potatoes so I will be checking over these potatoes the ones that have been heaved up and if they've got any scratches on them I will be throwing them away because obviously we don't want anything that has the potential to have any disease from a, an, an animal um, on it. Um, if they look fine then I'll be giving them a really really good peel and using them that way. But I think if, um, if the fox is looking for another den I don't think this is a particularly good place. Though at the community gardens which have got three meter by three meter plots a fox did actually dig down the centre of one community plot one year and um, dug a tunnel right through to another plot or the neighbouring plot. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I think by the time it gets down below this soft layer, it'll be pretty firm underneath there. Right, I'm just going to get on with watering. Actually, let's just have a look at the um, how the Portuguese cabbage are doing in the polytunnel because I don't think I've shown you those since we sowed them just over a week ago. These are our Portuguese cabbage. As you can see, pretty good germination. We've sowed two seeds in each module and two have come up in most. There's one here, one here, one over there, and one there. But yeah, pretty good germination. And I will be pricking those out. In fact, shall I do it now? I might as well do it now. I'm looking at which one is the, the weaker and just taking it out. I have to say this is a job I I hate because it's sort of it feels wrong but it's what I decided to do for this load here this sewing sew into modules and then thin I'm just deciding which one I think is stronger and taking the other one out uh, there. Okay, so that's one in each module now. Because of where these sit, the sun is obviously this end. So these down here tend to grow towards the sun obviously this side has got that big buddleia there so and also our neighbor's um, shed is there so not a great deal of sun comes in that side I mean you can see some does but more comes in the front so these tend to grow towards the front and then what I do is I just spin this whole tray this whole tray around 180 degrees so this will end up at the back and I do that every maybe two days. 
these don't need to be in the polytunnel they're not in here for heat they're actually in here because at the moment this has been the cooler area because of the shading here i think maybe sometime this week we'll take them out and put them into our grow house where the turnips are as you can see we've got those tomatoes still there the um the lady we were going to give them to says she does want them so they're going today to her our cutting some guernsey all doing okay um not sure about this pink here but this one's doing okay this one's sort of doing okay not sure about that one but we'll see but the geraniums yeah i'm i'm not sure if you can see there's a little bit of growth there on this one bit of growth there bit of new growth there if we come over to these where well, i've just plonked our thinnings so that's what they're called the hot and top figs they seem to be doing fine this one over here maybe not no no definitely not but in terms of geraniums i think this one don't think anything's going to happen there either no but look at some growth there on this one growth there all of these are doing okay that one obviously nothing in there don't know why but yeah the whole oh, one over here new growth that's looking healthy i think new growth under there so yeah i'm happy with all of our cuttings it's actually now six hours later than it was for you one minute ago and i'm back <laughs> i know it's a bit odd but i'm back down and you can see that in the six hours i've been away these have been growing towards the light quite significantly yeah let me just pop in the shed and i'll explain why i'm six hours later yes it's now 3 30 and i was down here this morning what was that nine o'clock so it got to a certain point where i was going to show you that last tray of cuttings and then for some reason you could hear my voice but you couldn't actually see the picture in what i had filmed so i thought i'd pop down and just sort of finish it off and boy is it hot down here um 42.5 degrees in the shed at the moment and i'm a bit sweaty betty i must admit however there was obviously a reason for me to come down not just to film that last tray of cuttings but also to bump into somebody that i gave a pair of boots that i wasn't going to use again i gave them a pair of boots yesterday look what they've given me oh oh i want to sink my teeth into it <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Um, it's called a beef master, apparently. You can see beefy, beefy tomato. I think it's F1, so I don't think you can save seed from it. But the fellow plot holder has grown these for quite a few years. And apparently that's an average one. They get even bigger. So, oh, oh it's just amazing. Oh, if I didn't think Richard was going to see this video, I'd, I'd eat it all now. <laughs> oh, that's naughty. Oh, anyway, right, I'm going to leave it there. I just wanted to explain why it was six hours later. And yeah, I will see you again very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot on Planet Vegetaria. Or well, obviously, if this is on YouTube, it's the beginning of the week and the end of the first segment and i am dripping with sweat isn't that a lovely thought i'll leave you with that thought bye good day we have rain and good rain at that it rained last night quite heavily we had two bouts of short bursts about five minutes each 
around I think 7.30, 8 o'clock, something like that and then it got quite humid and I think it must be about 11.30 now and about an hour ago it started with light drizzle and now we have constant light to medium weight rain is medium weight a term when it comes to rain? I mean it's sort of the middle between light and heavy if you see what I mean it's good rain it's rain that will actually soak into the surface of the soil or at least begin to soak into the surface of the soil allowing deeper penetration should we get more rain I don't know how long this is going to go on for but hopefully hopefully all day hopefully that would be great it would mean I wouldn't have to water her as well so yeah that would be really good anything to cut down on watering though of course what we don't want is blight um, which I don't think I've looked at agricasts and I can't see significant blight in the area but of course that is the potential with rain anyway I'm gonna leave it there and get back to my desk and carry on working bye good day it's Thursday afternoon and it is very very humid down here today there's a lovely breeze which is absolutely great but the humidity is there and the reason being, yesterday the skies opened and it bucketed it down. I was finishing off my next article in the series Guernsey Gardener in London for the Guernsey Press, which will be in on Saturday. And I looked, I looked out from our back window at the top of the house and just thought, gosh, it's gone really grey. And literally moments after I thought that I was sort of gazing out the window and it just started chucking it down and chucking it down so much. In fact, that Richards was shouting upstairs to me, shut the windows because on our landing where the, the wind and the rain was coming in that direction or the rain mainly, it was actually coming in the bottom of the sash window. So, um, yeah, it needed to be shut. The windows needed to be shut because the rain would have come in. It was that heavy. After about maybe 15 minutes, it lightened up quite a bit. But then it rained really good rain, actually, for about another two and a half hours. So I think we had about three hours of rain yesterday. So obviously everything is looking really um, clean on the plot. I mean, the things that are already going over, like the beans, you know, they're, they're, we're not, well, unless we get a really, really long Indian summer, they're not going to grow from the bottom again and start producing again. So the fact they have yellowed and they are really going over, their time has come for this year. But I've noticed that some of the things are looking a bit fresher. So the butternut squash, which was looking a bit weak and some of the cucumbers which were beginning to look a bit weak they seem to be a little bit better today the oregon homestead sweet meat squash though i think i'm gonna have to trim it off at the end because that is yeah we've got one forming i'd rather that one had the best chance of forming so i'm going to cut it off beyond that one so that all the energy that gets produced by the plant to produce that fruit goes into that fruit and not into a potential further fruit or um, growing that vine even longer but one of the jobs that obviously I've had to do today because we had so much rain yesterday is emptying gravel trays and uh, it was, it's been quite you know it's a job actually there's, there's a few trays that we've got with plants in that I thought oh I'll sort out those plants tomorrow. I'll sort out those plants tomorrow. Tomorrow becomes the day after, becomes the day after, and I haven't sorted them out. Well, with so much water in the gravel trays, I have sorted those out. Where cuttings haven't taken, 
I have taken the cuttings out where where the cuttings haven't taken in a pot whatsoever I've emptied that pot and that compost is now on one of the beds here um, yeah I've just I've just tidied up the trays really and then the water that was in those trays which is about an inch to an inch and a half that has in the main either gone over our courgette plant that is doing really really well or gone over the thornless blackberry that we had an issue with if you remember when we went to Guernsey it was just at the end of that heat wave and I said to people just water these things and I I sort of forgot about that thornless blackberry by the time we came back all of the the fruit that had formed had just dried so because there's so many nutrients in that water that those pots and the container wise module trays have sat in those trays with all that water there's so many nutrients in that water I put a lot of the water over that thornless blackberry because yeah I want to sort of try and give it a boost so that's what I have done what I've also done is I've moved the Portuguese cabbage as I said I was going to do the seedlings in the polytunnel I've moved those into the grow house but I realise in doing that, and I sort of knew this, but I realise in doing that, that even though four container wise trays or standard seed trays will fit in the, um, the width of the grow house we've got, when those trays then sit in a gravel tray, you can't put two large gravel trays side by side. So I've been looking at plans online about how I might build a wider grow house than we've got here at the moment it's not urgent at all it would be something that I might do over the winter uh, I do have most of the materials I might ask one of our plot holders here to help me as well but um, you know we'll see we'll see how that goes but the reason that I've taken those things uh, the Portuguese cabbage out from the polytunnel is twofold a I wanted to there's no reason for them to be in the polytunnel and they'll do fine in the grow house they'll get some wind so they'll strengthen up as well the second reason is because i'm going to do more sowing today i'm going to be sowing parsley giant of italy and lolo rosso lettuce so i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same as i did with the portuguese cabbage we've got the smaller container wise cell trays i think there's there's 15 in the larger cell tray and there's I think 24 modules in the smaller cell tray so I'm going to be using that smaller cell tray and I'm going to sow two seeds as we did with the Portuguese cabbage per cell and then I'm going to prick out the weakest once I can see how the seedlings have germinated so I'm going to get on and do that. Um, I'm not going to show you that because we've we've done this before, but we haven't actually done it in cell trays before. Normally, when I sow lettuce and parsley, I do it in a in a sort of half size seed tray, and I just scatter the the seed in, and then obviously put the compost on top. So it's going to be interesting to see how these do do being sown as we did with the Portuguese cabbage two seeds in an individual cell um, which will then be planted out once the seedlings have got to a good size so I'm just going to get on and do that I'm not going to take you with me because um, there's something else that we're going to be doing later in the week as well and I'm not quite sure where we are on the time for the length of this at the moment but I don't think you want me waffling on for ages so I'm just going to get on and sow these seeds now as we did with the Portuguese cabbage. Was it on Sunday? I'll link to that video um, that we did. And no, it can't have been Sunday because they wouldn't be out last Sunday week. Actually, that was when it was, wasn't it? I'll link to that video and you can see exactly how we, we sowed those and how I'm going to sow these. I am waffling now, aren't I? I am. I'm going to go. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. I've been doing tomato cares this morning, thinning out a few leaves and 
taking off side shoots. Actually, you always miss one side shoot, don't you? Look at that one, that one can come off. These are now, I reckon, four and a half foot. These are the black crim and are doing the best this year. You can see they're beginning to Oh, actually, you know, that is soft and ripe underneath already. Oh, look, another side shoot. Certainly don't want energy going into side shoots at this time of year. I think because of the heat we had, which was way out of the optimal range for ripening for tomatoes, which is around 20 to 25 degrees, um, they just went into a sort of semi-dormancy and stopped ripening, which is what they do. And I think what's happened is now that we've got cooler temperatures, they've they've sort of started ripening quickly, but this isn't ripe at the top, but it's very soft down here. I can just feel how soft it is. And you can see how they're beginning to ripen up. Yeah, these are all black crim. We come over here, these are our Amish paste. There's one beginning to colour up there. Then onto Brad's Atomic Grape, which if we go around the other side, can we get down there? Yeah, I think, I think these are, yeah, those are ripe, I think. We're going to take them anyway. Oh, another side shoot there. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. Yeah, however often you do your, not often, well, you do. You always find a few more side shoots. They might be small, but take them off. What I'm also going to be doing now that I've done the tomato cares is taking off any flower sprays that have not taken. Only for me out of neatness. So if we come down here and see this flower here has not taken, I'm going to cut that off cut these off they're not really going to do anything up here we've got some more here got some more here that's just really for tidying I mean the heat you know, there's just nothing in there the heat just stopped the ripening process and stopped the pollination process so there's sort of like a foot of stalk which has got which has had flowers but they just haven't pollinated but you know this is looking lovely at the top here yeah real mixed bag this year tomato wise well generally i think let's go and have a look at the guernsey tomatoes really quite small plants not what i remember at all for a reason that i'm just checking but um yeah but they're they're beginning to color up you can see those over there particularly this one isn't a guernsey tomato in the middle but most of them are and then we come over to these another mixed bag i think I think quite a lot of these are black crim actually. I was so bad with labelling this year. But again, yeah, those to me seem ripe. Look, that one's actually splitting. That's um, with the rain that we've had. And then over here, this is a red ox heart. I think that's the only one we've got. These are all Amish paste. I thought most of these were black crim, uh, sorry, red ox heart. 
but it looks as though most of these were Amish paste, but really not doing anything. And then these here are the soldaki with the potato leaf, potato leaf um, tomato. But yeah, I mean, I've really been thinning these. I mean, in some cases you can see here, that's a really fresh cut. There was a branch coming up here, virtually as big as the one that's already or still there and it just had nothing on it. So as we're getting surprisingly late in the season, even though it's just mid-August, I decided to take any branches that had no tomatoes forming off. So I thinned them right down. Checking Agricast, I get the Agricast blight forecast daily and there's nothing coming up. Um, so there's no blight in the air at the moment, but you know, who knows if we have more rain next week, maybe the, the blight will increase or come and then increase. So we just need to keep an eye. Anyway, yes, I'm definitely going to be taking these home today and we're going to have those for lunch. What an odd tomato year. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's Saturday and I've just noticed this morning that the paths are beginning to green back up. Down sort of almost at the top of the screen you can see two patches of green but those have always been green because they're where quite a lot of water drops because of A watering and B a water butt but in front here in front of our plot you can see that there's quite a bit of green coming back into that path. It's amazing really how nature mends itself in the right conditions or rather given the right conditions. Yeah I have been looking at our squash though and mm, I don't think they're looking that great. Let's have a quick look. As part of a highly scientific experiment which began, was it last Sunday? I gave these butternut squash a really good talking to and said you know if you're gonna carry on just putting out male flowers then forget it. I want female flowers please. I did say please and actually I think one of the plants listened. <gasps> no two other plants have listened. I've just noticed literally as I've been talking to you look can you see this one here that tiny butternut. So we've got a butternut forming there And I've seen, but I mean, look at the yellowing of the leaves. I mean, you know, this is sort of September, not the middle of August. I know I say that all the time at the moment, but look. However, the, the colour of the leaf is rather glorious in itself. But yeah, no, where did I, oh, here. Yay butternut forming <laughs> so it looks as though we'll have one let's have a look at this one I haven't looked at this one yeah still a lot of male flowers coming on there yeah so actually I think the jury's out on this highly scientific experiment. Does talking to plants improve them? Maybe I just scolded them too much and they thought, if you're going to shout at me, I'm just going to carry on with my female my male flowers and not put out my female flowers. But yeah, it looks as though we've got one or potentially two squash forming. 
Let's have a look at the other bed. Again, you can see here that the leaves are beginning to lose colour. But it's uh, these are cucumbers here, still producing well. That one will be then next to pick, but in here we can see some more. Oh, that's a very odd shaped one, look. You see that one? It's almost like a, a loop. Yeah, I think we'll still get a few more being produced. Over here is the courgette that has really done well for us this year. Um, and and go in there, you can see two more already coming, more flowers to come. But this one, which is the Oregon Homestead sweet meat down there, it's coming off that vine and you can see that that vine is beginning to die back so what i am going to do why haven't i got my secateurs in my pocket i'm going to, to just cut the vine off here because i don't want any energy going into here and producing anything here because it's quite clear that any energy we have or it has should be going into growing that squash so that's what I'm going to do trim the squash back the rest will just leave as they are and hopefully they'll produce more it really does feel here as though we are tipping over into autumn and you know, meteorological autumn is only 11 days away at the moment. So it's the beginning of September, the start of meteorological autumn, start of September. And it sort of, you know, feels it. I mean, you know, we've had seasons here where things have been really great right through to the end of September and even going into October. But certainly this is not one of those years. And of course, it's been because of the heat waves we've had, the really, really high heat that we had um, of 40 degrees and above back in July and the drought, you know, the drought that we've 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 had for so long. As we know, it broke earlier this week. We had the rain on Tuesday and then torrential rain on on Wednesday. But certainly you can see that certain things have suffered the beetroot hasn't um what else hasn't i think that's about it i think everything else has gone over earlier than expected or in the case of the tomatoes we've had a a week or two weeks where no flowers got pollinated and therefore no tomatoes have been produced and now we've got bright sunshine. I was just saying to somebody only a minute ago, you know, it's so grey today. It feels so cold. And then suddenly, you know, five, ten minutes later, there's bright sunshine. But yeah, you know, that that itself feels like autumn. Bright sunshine, grey skies, clear skies, you know, bits of rain. That to me feels like an English autumn. What I had expected to do today and sort of I have done, is harvest our first Guernsey Island tomatoes. Because they've been ripening, a couple have been ripening over the last couple of days. Two Guernsey Island tomatoes, which smell absolutely glorious. They do actually smell like Guernsey tomatoes. Yeah, they, they absolutely do. But I'm not going to be eating these. Why aren't I going to be eating these? Because they have already been eaten. Came down here and noticed two magpies both pecking into these. Well, one pecking into this one, one pecking into that one. Obviously, I don't know what diseases may be on a bird's beak, but unfortunately, that smell is going to be the only thing I'm going to get. 
I thought this one would be for Richard and this one would be for me. But no, both have gone to wildlife on our plot. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these at the base of our Guernsey tomato bed. Because, you know, I'd rather that any magpies that come along pick on these two. So, yeah, there we are. Bit of a disappointment that. <laughs> I think it has to be said. Though I do have a few things to make up for it. Um, this is a tub full of cherry tomatoes. Real, real tiny. Look, they're like almost the size of, what's that? Oh, I don't know. It's the size for my mouth, I know that. Oh, mmm, lovely, lovely. Fellow plot holder has given us these. So thank you very much to the two of them for, for giving us those. Another thing. More eggs. Oh, dropped something. More eggs. Another plot holder has given us five eggs from her chicken. So that's absolutely lovely. Thank you very much to her. And then thank you very much to my client Patricia who normally buys me a bottle of whiskey for my birthday and I said to her please don't buy me whiskey I'm trying to cut down on calories and also um, because of that not drink so much alcohol which makes me sound as though I drink a lot but I, I don't but give me a bottle of whiskey and yeah it, it, it'll be gone within a, a, a couple of weeks certainly so she said, well, what can I get you? And I said, look, you know, thanks very much. I really need nothing. Um, so she sent me some money and she said, I know you want some books. See if you can find them and if you can buy them. $64 tomato, 52 loaves. And also um, there was some money left over from buying these two to buy a Leon vegetarian cookbook as well, which I had been wanting to, to get for quite a while. These did come from World of Books. Thank you very much to, oh, I can't remember, sorry, who, um, who pointed out these were on um, these, were on World of Books. Interestingly, when I did a search for the $64 tomato on World of Books, it didn't actually come up. Um, but when I searched for the author's name, it did come up. So, um, so I've got those two books and I'm really pleased. They're going to be autumn reading, I think. Um, I think I might read the $64 tomato before I read um, 10 Tomatoes That Changed the World that Faith bought um, me a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, I'm I'm really chuffed. So thank you very much, Patricia, for my birthday money and um, really appreciate it. And yes, thank you. And I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, whether you're on Planet Vegetaria or YouTube. I hope you do like what uh, we do. I mean, if you didn't, you wouldn't be watching, I assume. And if you do have any comments, please put them down below and I will um, I will get round to getting back to you. Any questions, of course, put in the comments below as well. Right. I am going to leave it there. I will be. It's Saturday one o'clock. I'm going to be going home for some lunch. We're out at a friend this evening. So I'm going to be editing a week at the plot tomorrow. So I'm not having a day off on Sunday. I will be editing uh, the upload tomorrow. Um, but I won't see you tomorrow. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, so I'm finishing it here on a Saturday. I'm about to pick some lettuce. Uh, pick the... Oh, was I going to... No, I don't need to pick that tomato because I've been given these tomatoes. So we're going to have these tomatoes for lunch. Anyway, you don't need to know that. I've got a few more things to do here and then I'm going to be going home for lunch. And I will see you again another week if you watch this on YouTube 
or I'll see you throughout the week if you watch the individual segments on Planet Vegetaria. Bye.